G'day, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Mate Sports Betting Podcast. Today, I'm joined by both the founder of Predictology and football advisor, amongst a lot of other things that he does, Jonathan Roberts. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Alex. Good to be here. Pleasure having you on, mate. Maybe just kick things off, uh, let people know a little about yourself. You do, uh, from the emails you've sent me, a lot of uh, a lot of different things. You're a man of many talents. So, yeah, maybe give a short background on yourself and, yeah, and what your role is kind of in the betting industry. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, look, career-wise, you know, I, I did uh, my betting sort of part-time for, for a number of years, like many of us, I would imagine. I was quite lucky to be... Um, quite early into the digital marketing industry, sort of back in 2004 time, uh, when Google was sort of a new thing. Um, and it was, a, you know, it was a great time to be in an industry, work with some really interesting companies, all startups, you know, you get to experience you know, tremendous growth in your career and, and exposure to things. And I mean, it was really interesting. In past times, my role was very analytical, analytical sort of a cat man, slash analyst, you know, got to deal with large data sets, optimization, spotting trends and stuff, you know, and these are all types of skills that lend themselves very well to the betting world as well. Yeah, um, yeah, no, definitely. There, <laughs> yeah, and, and look, it's around that time that, God, I'm going to show my age now, so maybe some of your older viewers will will uh, <laughs> remember this site, but there was a, a website called adrianmassey.co.uk, and it was just, it was like the number one resource for horse racing data, even back in, you know, the 2004, 2005 time, it was even then, I had a huge amount of data, and it, and it just, uh, I'd, I'd lose weekends just pulling data out of there, analyzing it, trying to perfect a strategy, find an edge, you know, and fortunately was able to do so during that time. And uh, uh, as, a, as a side note, it was around this time that I um, also got quite interested, quite involved with sort of casinos and casino bonuses, mainly around blackjack. It's quite early on in those 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 days. And um Bizarrely, I uncovered this German mathematician from the 16th century that had this progressive, positive progressive, you know, obviously only increasing stakes when you're winning, not like Martingale, which, Martingale, which is a, a terrible idea. Um, and the strange thing was, it really, worked, it really worked well to be applied to blackjack. And then for about six, nine, maybe 12 months, I was able to go onto these online casinos and pick up one, 200 pounds a day profit from a very short period of time. But then as they are wont to do, they update, update their software and it just became so you know, the losing runs you see and the soft stuff. So that sort of edge disappeared quite quickly, but it was a, uh, a good period to sort of capitalize on. And a lot of those profits were just falling into my racing and funding my learning, I guess is the way of putting it. Um, but, you know, uh, but as an aside, that, that I've, I've never seen that, that particular strategy or that person ever mentioned ever, ever again in any Thing I've ever seen with staking plans or anything online. So I must have got very because it still works in a traditional sense. So if I go to a Bricks and Mortar Casino once in a while, uh, not, I can walk away from, from there with a decent profit. I just don't do it extensively because I just don't like spending too much time in a casino. Um, but you know, the things progressed from there. You know, I think around about the late 2000s, uh, I started to go down the route of being a, a, a tipster. Um, and as an aside, saw your video on, on that topic uh, a while back and uh, agree with all the points that you made, um, 100%. Oh, that's good, mate. Uh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 100%. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever quoted or included a link for a bookmaker, you know, and all the other, other aspects to it. But, you know, I, I did it more out of anything to instill discipline and accountability in what I was doing. You know, I was doing reasonably well, but for me personally, I felt that was one area if I wanted to go up a level in what I was doing, I needed those um confines to work within and you know to being a tipster sort of helped you be uh you know accountable to yourself but accountable to other people as well and i guess probably it was around this time that you know my my passion is football i mean i still make good money from horse racing but i always wanted to be more trading and betting in the in the football industry and you know having experienced the type of data that was available in horse racing it, it blew my mind that um you couldn't access this type of data in the football markets. I mean, you've got a lot of stats websites, which we're all familiar with, but what really frustrated me about those types of websites is you can't really do anything with the data. You know, it's presented there that Team X has had, you know, averages 34% of the games being two and a half goals, but what does that really mean? You know, what, what if, can you extract that to look at over, over a thousand matches? No, you can't. You know, what were the odds associated with that? How do you develop an edge just by looking at those stats? It's great from a game to game basis, but if you've got no methodology behind it 
it doesn't really give you all that much value. Um, and that's sort of where I shall come on to I'm sure shortly. Uh, the idea of predictology came from, and you know, I, I've been building my own databases for for a very long time for that for that very reason. Um, so predictology sort of started as a as a passion project that I wanted, I needed, and then after a while, I started thinking, well, perhaps other people would like to see something like this, benefit from something like this, and you know, it's evolved a lot over the last six or seven years. Yeah, oh, I have lots of follow up questions on everything you just said, but I think maybe just to give a bit more grounding to the to the conversation maybe just explain exactly what predictology does and i guess your your goal there and then we can go from there yeah sure so i, look, I try to think of uh, predictology as um, you know if i wanted to build a, a football betting toolkit this is sort of what I, this is what those what the end, end goal is you know it started off purely as a system or strategy builder so we have around about 350,000 matches in the database currently, you know, it's growing every week. Uh, over 100 sort of variables you can look at, you know, in terms of average points, goals scored, form, all of those things. And then around, um, uh, we, and we pull in about 20 or 30 different bookmaker odds for each of those variables, you know. Um, and we cover six, I think the last count, 68 leagues and competitions across the globe. So you can literally go in there and go, right, okay, if, you know, the Premier League, uh, if I was to back over two and a half goals um, in a particular match where the home team has gone under two and a half in the last three games, you can run that. And within a few seconds, you'll see you know, every season going back to 2004, what the profitability would be around that. So, I mean, that's a simplistic uh, strategy, but it obviously you can go more compl complex that with that. But um, from there, we, we just try to develop out a number of other tools to assist members. You know, we find that we sort of have three different profiles of people that come in. You know, you have people who are who are classes as, as betters, but more, you know, pretty much just give me the tips. I want to follow something that's profitable. Let me place the bets. Job done. Um, you got traders that come in, but perhaps you need less assistance. You know, they already have in mind what they want to do in a the game. They're just looking for the a way to identify the best matches or the optimal conditions to enter those trades. And then what I would call a creators is probably, perhaps probably what I'm closer to that, you know, see nothing wrong with spending eight hours analyzing data and trying to develop their own strategy. They want to be self-sufficient. They want to be able to not rely on a person to give them tips, but actually to generate what they want to do. Uh, and that's sort of where we try to split the platform into those sort of three sort of key areas. We have analyzed through our AI, which will look at all the main uh, betting markets. It will calculate what we think is the, the true uh, price in the market. It will then compare that to what's available in the market and hopefully sort of identify um, what, where we think the value is in terms of price points. You know, and look, if, if you went to bet every single one of them, you would be profitable over a longer period of time, but it's obviously a huge amount of variance. So a lot of people would use that as their starting point. Okay, this price looks like value. What's the next stage of analysis I can do to pick between the 10 options that I've got in front of me, that sort of thing. And we've got various rating models and and, and pre-built strategies that we use regularly that we, we allow members to access as well. So it's quite a few different aspects to what we do. Yeah, I mean, it, it does sound like a, a very useful toolkit for for people taking their betting really seriously. Would you would you say that people who are just doing, you know, punting or betting as a, as a hobby or, you know, maybe they're trying to generate a side income, like is it maybe too, a bit too full on for them, like beginners getting into the industry? Um, I, I like to think it's not. I mean, something like this, you try to need to know everything and use everything on the platform, but you don't. You know, everyone who joins I always recommend, like, just pick one area or I, I try and talk them, you know, we're in that journey of their betting. I try to drive, direct them to a platform that's probably most suited to their stage of that journey. And I would say to spend time on that, get comfortable with that, start making some money with that, ignore the rest of it. You know, ignore the, the more advanced tools. You don't need those today. And, you know, and we've... We put things in there like shortlists, so you know each day you can walk it, walk, uh, come in and just just check out the shortlist. They'll show you which games have the best profile for first half, half goals for over 1.5, 2.5, where the home teams are strongest. And, and literally, if you just stick to those, you'll do pretty well. Um, so I think we try, try to make it as easy for people, uh, well, whatever stage of the journey they are on, in terms of their their punting. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting because. At least the the way I perceive the industry is everyone kind of wants a wants a quick tip. Like everyone wants to follow 
a tipster. Everyone, I mean, everyone's just essentially quite lazy, and and they want to yeah. get an get an edge from from somewhere else. Which I've, I don't think there's any any problem with that at all. But I just I wonder how, um, yeah, how a product like yours, uh. How, how it, I guess, survives in that marketplace because I mean, we have the same problem or at least the same, we're kind of in the same industry because Trademate Sports, we have two different products. One's mm. Core, which is like very self-explanatory. You can beat the soft books very easily, but then you have the Pro version, which is trying to beat the Sharp and the Exchanges and it's a lot more like yours, like a toolkit. And um, I think people get very... Uh, confused uh, at the difference between um, tips yeah. and a toolkit, if you get what I mean. So I'd love to know how, um, yeah, what the reception no, has 100%. been like because at least the way I look at the industry, it's like the opposite of what people want. <laughs> yeah, and look, I 100% agree and I think we've, ex- we've experienced the same. And, look, and I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be honest here. So, you know, we, we have a big core base and it seems to be those that sort of – uh, get past a certain point, they're with us forever. They love what we do, always getting those positive emails. But you do get, you know, a, a, a fair proportion of people will come in, sign up. You know that all they want is the tips. They, if they if they join in a week where the tips are winners, they'll they'll see it out for a few more weeks. If they join when there's a couple of losers, they're gone again, right? And it's like here here one second, gone yeah. the next. Uh, you know, and uh, and it's an industry challenge. It really is. And I don't know these people have been so conditioned to buying the next shine or the hits. And it's just this sort of rinse and re- recycle road to ruin, right? You buy a system, you try it for a week, you lose, you buy the next shiny one and the next one. And it's very hard for people like ourselves or you. Uh, look, now we're different, but you've still got it. still the, the same for you. You've got to allocate your right bank. You've got to understanding all of those things. And you know what? So many people go, yeah, yeah, I know all that. You might know it, but are you actually? Yeah, 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 I know, mate. It's it's. You know, we're looking at more more and more ways to do it. I think we're on a we're on a slight lag here, but um, yeah, I was just gonna say that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I notice in our own our own results that if um, just going back month after month and looking at the results of the software versus the results of Mm -hmm. subscriptions and people leaving, it's always. At its highest, people leave when the software doesn't perform up to its normal standards. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, I guess something that the the industry will probably uh, probably never move away from, especially you know when the the power is in the bookmakers and and they can kind of feed feed lots of uh, not not true information. I guess is the the best way to put it about how to win from sports betting. So. Yeah, I uh, I feel for you, mate. I know exactly how it works. I'd love to know how um how like useful you think the product is in an era where there's there's so much data around. Like you know, I was only talking to a to a colleague earlier today about how it's really hard to to find an edge in betting nowadays based on data and statistics because it's all publicly information now. It's not like however many years ago when xg and all these kind of underlay underlying data was mm. was first found so um yeah how do you kind of combat that and and provide something like i guess different data or, or more advanced data than people can get out there there's probably two answers to that question i think in terms of data and edge like i think there is an element of whack-a-mole with it so you know, as one edge closes old or something and I've seen it where, you know, things that look like they've lost that edge a year or two start to come back in. You know, I'm lucky I've got systems I've built, you know, over 10 years or so. So you can see that these some, these actually start coming back around again. I don't know. That's just a theory of mine whether, you know, no one can know every, all data at all times and be applying that at all times, right? So, you know, th- you have to be able to adapt to that. But I think where pretology, um, I think, really comes into its own and it's sort of the, the way I approach a lot of my betting is is trying to take that portfolio approach. So, you know, I really focus on, um, you know, my uh, not yeah, sort of mini sort of micro strategies. You know, they're not going to have a huge amount of bets every week. You're not going to retire off one of those particular systems. But if you had, it's hard enough trying to follow three systems manually. You know, going to the bookmakers, making sure you get the best odds, all of those things. 
But if, imagine if you could uh, extrapolate that out and have 40 systems where you, that does a couple of things for you. It should, in theory, smooth out the variance because even if portfolio is going for, a, for a sort of be compensating for that. And that's why we've really, put our, I guess our next leap forward is around automation. So as we uh, as we speak right mm. now, we have built an inter, um, it's an over 10 years, I think they're a great team, great product. But what it'll allow you to do is you can go into system into the system builder part of Predictology, develop your strategies, and have that placing those bets automatically through the Betfair exchange. You know, and to give you uh, at the moment, it's I'm, I'm the only one using it. There's going to be a few others. Uh, for example, Nist that as well. Um, and you know, I've I've run it for the last two weeks. It's had 313 bets, 162 winners, 37 points profit. You know, of 40 strategies. Not all of those have had a bet. But some of them have, some of them have. They're thinking, well, maybe that's the way you have entry points into the market where you perhaps couldn't do that as a human, uh, you know, manually. But if this strategy mm. is in the last iteration of pre-match, there's there's things I'll look at from uh, in play. You know, for example, if I've got a uh, let's just say a back withdrawal system that, that works pretty well, you know, it, it drives a nice ROI. Now you can try and be a little bit more canny with that, right? No matter this them and going right. Well, I've got about a forty percent chance of this. Particularly, any any one of these matches being a draw. Now you're at uh, the 70th minute marking against a go. Perhaps you're actually getting better odds and better value backing at that point on the draw because you know statistically you should be right one 40% of the time. But the odds are going to affect the gameplay price. So you're going to win. come along. You're going to get a much different ways. I think in the, the data or the strategy is telling you. Yeah. Well, what's the demand like for? for automation like these days? I mean, I know you're in the, the beta phase, but is this something that you've, um, yeah, you've seen that increasingly people are interested in automation? Yeah, look, I think we've probably been one of the, one of the, at the forefront of it to a degree. So through Football Advice, say 90% of the services that we offer through, through there, um, we offer it as an automation option. So it's a little bit different to how predictology works, but what will the selections to a platform on our end, which then pushes into someone's BF Pop Manager account. Again, it's a relatively easy setup. Once it, and once it's done, it, it's done. So you know they're they're, happy, they're able to follow our you know our, our football lay bets or our racing lay service or whatever it, whatever it might be. And if they're using BF Pop Manager, we'll give them the strategy file, the integration URL. They set it up in ten minutes, and after that, we'll just tip in. So I mean, what that's shown me over the last two or three years is that um, the adoption or, or percentage of our membership base to those services has been pretty high, you know? So I think there is an appetite for it. You know, I've had people that probably since early 70s going, oh, I'm a computer phobe, but you know, I don't know how to use BF Bot Manager and all of those sorts of things. Whereas, you know, we spend a bit of time working with them when we've got, you know, pensioners at home are, who are using this technology right through to a younger generation. And I think it's, it's also helped by the fact that things like virtual private servers uh, are so much more Cost, cost affordable now, you know, you could have a cloud-based server for, for 10 pounds a month, stick uh, your betting bot on there. You don't have to worry if your computer or your mobile phone's on. You can access it from your mobile or computer wherever you are. Um, so I think it's an area that will, will continue to grow. You know, I think when I started using yeah, Fort Manager like or uh, some others 10 years ago, I mean, it's very rude. Uh, whereas now, you know, I can have a rule that will only place a bet after the 60th minute if the score is nil nil and there's been seven shots on target you know so you can get really quite advanced with those sorts of things so i, I think it's something that an area I, I believe that will grow because it's the area where it's I, I suppose in a way it's the closest you can get to something like a star lizard or a smart arts where you know, they do but it's a way of taking that sort of broader approach in a way that that you couldn't do as an individual so looking to build a portfolio you, you do want 40 50 strategies working for you across multiple nations is the way to do it yeah no it makes sense mate um, so within predictology, I assume like, you know, people are always testing and looking at the data and, you know, you know, maybe testing their theories or whatever. Like, do you, do you help people out with that? Like, do you help them, uh, with, with reading data and then going beyond that and trying to set up some kind of system? Um, cause I get, I mean, there's, there's a clear difference there between, having all the data there and then trying to analyze it and, and make a strategy based on it. So there's a, there's a couple of ways that we try to, we try to help people. I mean, first, firstly, we make the, you know, we provide, as you'd expect, a normal sort of system summary into strike rate, ROI, et cetera. We make the data downloadable so people can, can do their own analysis offline. 
But we, last year, we also released sort of something what we call extended analysis. Um, so this gives you, first and foremost, this gives your system a, a, a rating, like a, a, on a star basis. And that uses things like Chi score, Archie score, looks at the volume of bets, just so you can sort of build up a, a, a a statistical confidence level in it so you know it's not something that's going to be 10 bits over five years and you know it, it, it's not an edge just because it's, just because it's profitable whereas so things like that will do and you know, it really breaks it down a lot further into expected losing runs longest losing runs by season by league all of those aspects return on capital see i think by just by that data you can start to get a much stronger opinion about whether a strategy is viable whether you should follow those things but also you know myself and and the couple of guys that work with me we're always willing to you know you know we're literally probably going to be just responding to those types of emails but i think it's really important i think that's one of the things that i've always tried to do with football advisor and predictology is not just be a faceless person on a website but genuinely try to help people and we respond to literally every email, even the ones that aren't so nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so within reason, you know, I'll try and help people. I'll try, you know, I, I might not always give, you know, the, again, I don't really, uh, I guess the teaching the fish analogy, really, you know, what we're trying to do is we're not just trying to say, yeah, do this and then you just say, okay, well, what you're trying to achieve, what kind of Bets do you want, you know, there's no point building a lay system if you don't like liability and, and those types of things. So sort of try and give them those breadcrumbs to become self-sufficient rather than just go in, do this, do this, this bet. Because if I was doing that, they may as well just follow the tips that's already on the site. Yeah. No, no, well said, mate. Um, you've obviously, you know, been involved in the industry for quite a while now and you've been betting yourself. I know this is a very, uh, very broad question, but... Like, what have you maybe, what, like, what's been the most successful betting strategies for you in beating horse racing and 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 football? Is I mean, that might be too general of a question, but maybe you just want to give me a, a general answer there. Yeah, sure. You know, what, what I personally, where, where I've had, um, you know, it's not 100% of my betting profits or 100% of betting that I do, but where I really do like to focus is around the odds on. Uh, selections and that can be backing and laying different scenarios. You know, the system that I built in 2007, which I do laugh when people say the edges disappear because you know this one actually has, has year in year out since 2007 has delivered a profit uh, every single year, and it's the consistency. It's like 20, 30 profits, 30 from about 150. But it's not something you're going to retire on. But it's certainly not something you should ignore either. You know, it's a nice addition to the portfolio, and that is based on laying certain type under certain conditions that are odds on and i guess i think what my secret sauce when i'm looking at odds on i like to lay often people will leave to have a variable liabilities you know if it's 1.5 they'll put on and risk a tenner whereas i try to treat it as a um, level state a level level liability so we're always risking the 20 pounds if depending on what the odds of that horse are the returns are, uh, will, 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 will be variable so if you when you hit those occasions where it's a, a very short favorite, um, you know, your, your returns can be three, four, five times what your stake was. And I think that's where you, those strategies have the, 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 the strongest approach. But equally, you know, there's a racing, another racing model that I use, which again, it's, it's, it's based, um, but in certain conditions where a rated runner and it's, it's, it's uh, odds on, I'm hitting sort of 76% win rate and a 24% ROI on that over the last three years. So, you know, it's, it's, there can be a lot of shorter prices um, in both directions, backing and laying when you know, when you know what to, to look for. Um, I like to be contrarian with it. You know, I find that I really like to hone in on games where they think there's going to be no goals and the prices are incredibly high. You know, where, you know an average, average for 1.5, it should be sort of one, you know, usually we're team 1.2, 1.3 odds, whereas it's coming up at 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. You know, for me, that, that should almost be a bit every single time because even if it is the Brazil second division, the chance of one or two goals going in, it's definitely lo lower than that price. So I think, you know, I'm just, that's a little hint for maybe some of the viewers here that a little extra effort on those markets. If you look at those markets where the, the Mac really, really, really not expecting goals, a little extra research and you can, you can find some real nuggets in those. Yeah, no, it's great advice, mate. I, I've you've mentioned the word portfolio a lot of times. Is is this something that you've, I guess, taken to your betting? Like, you're you're not just focusing on a couple of 
different strategies you're kind of dipping your toes in and getting small ROIs maybe everywhere? Yeah, look, I think it's something that's evolved over time. So ironically, so yes, uh, me personally, I, I take very much a, a portfolio approach now across pretty much everything that I, that I do. But if I was someone starting out, my advice and it would be to, you know, people think they need four or five strategies or 10 strategies to, to be profitable. I, I, I would say find one strategy that works for you, in terms of how you bet, your time available, all of those things. Just grow that one till you sort of reach the, the market limitations on your stake, then add two and three and four and five. But so many people sort of go out gung ho, their $500 bank. They think they can be following a football tipster, a racing tipster, another late tipster, and that bank doesn't go very far. But just whether it's your own strategy or following something else or whatever, it is to start, get something profitable that works for you, and then build up from there to a portfolio. Don't try and sort of skip that step. Yeah, I was going to ask for someone that's, you know, you, you're, um, you produce so many products and softwares for, for all kinds of betters, and you've obviously dealt with a lot of people in this industry. Like, what advice you'd give to aspiring betters who are quite new to the industry? But I mean, some of the greatest things you've, you've said today is, you know, I don't know, treating this like, a, like an investment almost. Yeah, and, and, I'm sure, and I'm sure I've heard this on, on other podcasts of yours and that people have done. It is really much. You've got to treat it like, a, if not, a, if, if not a, 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 a job, treat it as if it was like a serious hobby. You know, if you were collecting uh, cards or stamps or whatever it would be, you'd be very serious. Assess the market. You would uh, allocate yourself budget. Uh, you would attempt to negotiate things or, or, in our example, find better prices. And I think it's the same thing. If you, if you genuinely want to start a journey to becoming profitable or semi better you need to come up with that plan and then and, and follow that plan and i think make it as make it as simple as possible which is why i say start with one strategy but but make it something that you will follow and if you're not prepared to follow that accept that you're just going to be accept that and and become a you know sticky racker on a saturday and, and, and leave it at that but it's no point doing a half half measures because you're just going to fall between the cracks because uh, you know what i what i hate seeing is is people that you know, they'll, they'll sign up to a service, they'll allocate a bank, or at least in their mind they've allocated a bank, but they haven't really because as soon as it loses 20%, they're, they're quitting, but they don't get the, the upswing. And what you're doing is actually doubling your loss, right? Because you move on to the next one, then you lose another 100 quid, and you move on to the next one, lose another 100 quid, whereas if you stay with, with the right one, assuming you were a good service and you're doing your research, you're just doubling your loss rather than really playing it right. So I get so many people that are like, they think they've allocated a bank, but they never were going to use the full bank. So if you, if you weren't going to use the full bank, half the bank you started with and be prepared to use the full bank. Otherwise, there's no point in having <laughs> bank at all. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, well said, mate. And, and what's the, like, reception like for you trying to explain to people that you can almost, yeah, you can treat this like it's an investment, like, you know, like it's a, like you're on the stock market or something like that? Because if you tell someone to invest in stocks they don't bat an eyelid but if you tell them to invest in gambling they bat a lot of eyelids <laughs> <laughs> look I th yeah i mean it, it, it's also like that one that look i have mates that, that that don't gamble but then they ask me for a tip and, I, and i'm always like well <laughs> what's one one tip doesn't really make anything right because it doesn't it, it's 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 it, you either in or, or you're not but uh, to, to answer your question, um, ah, look, I, I think the nicest way of putting it is it's it's like dealing with the general public. You know, you're, a large proportion of people are uh, uh, receptive, willing to learn, interested in what you, you want to see. Some are okay, but just not going to grasp it. And then you've got a smaller percentage who just want to tell you to F off every, no matter what you tell them. Yeah. No, very well said once again, mate. Um, mate, I've, I've enjoyed talking about, yeah, predictology, football advisor, all things betting, but you've dabbled uh, or started dabbling in something a lot different or not too different, but a differently, definitely another space. Um, explain explain your company, mm. Sarah, to me. And I'm sorry if I haven't pronounced that um, that well and maybe, yeah, ex explain. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, go. <laughs> Yeah, firstly, it's it's not my company. Uh, I should, should make that very very clear. <laughs> um, but, and it's pretty so rare. So I, I I only brought it up as it's something that um, 
I just, I'm just fascinated by it. It's very, very different to what I've done before, and I'm not claiming to be the expert by any imagination. But I guess as a, as a, as a, as a quick sort of recap, I mean, summary of it. I mean, it's it's a cross between you know like the Omni stickers and things like that, but in a digital form and fantasy football. Yeah. Um, so you know you're playing, you you you're acquiring and picking up game cards, um, but. I guess the key difference is because it's built on the blockchain and crypto and I'll try not to get too technical. Those cards are, uh, out, they are yours. So even if the SoRare platform disappeared tomorrow, you are still the registered owner of that. So, um, but it's, you know, I, I never really, for example, I never got, so a lot of people, the first thing when they hear this would probably think about football index, which I think is a terrible situation and what, and what happened. I, I never really got involved with football index. I, I looked at it a couple of times didn't really make sense to me whereas this really does make sense to me you know it, there's um you know it, it, it basically very much follows the fantasy form uh, football format um there's a wealth of data you can use and i guess that's where my appeal comes to it um you know the the value of these cards are increasing significantly yeah i think we're still very much you know if people have got in last year and that's not me you know they, they were picking up cards that were costing 30 dollars and are now worth 600 or a thousand or more dollars right um but they've only they've got something like 25,000 30,000 users on the platform but if you think 2.7 million or something like that play Premier League fantasy football there's huge potential growth in the market um you know the the, the other thing is that the, the, the cards are actually licensed and registered from the football teams which I find really interesting as well so if uh if um you know AC Milan's on the platform those players the cards related to that are authorized by AC Milan and the player player involved. So again, it's not just someone seeing a folding, you know, these are all very legitimate collectibles just in the digital environment. And I think, you know, for where it is today, uh, you know, and if, where it can be in one, two, five years, if, if, if they get to the, near those fantasy football playing levels, um, you know, it, 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 those, those markets could be, could be very interesting. Uh, I think the best example is look at something like DraftKings. I don't know if you've ever played that, but a very big, a popular fantasy football out of the US. You know, for that you you know you pay a entry fee every time, um, and you know you have the chance to win prizes, but often you don't. Blah 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 blah. Uh, whereas this, you're kind of doing it in a, in, a, in reverse. You're sort of paying your entry fee up front by acquiring the cards that you want, but every competition after that is free, and you can win uh, cash prizes. You can win more valuable cards. You know, and I think there's this tournament's literally happening every two, twice a week with it. So. I just think it's something that's got a huge amount of potential. I love the analytics side of it. Um, the, 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 comp- the team behind it seem um, really, really good and smart. And it's got some incredible backers, you know, like Sabrio Ferdinand, Oliver Bierhoff, all these people are investors in the company. Uh, so it's got some real legitimacy in, in that space. Um, uh, Gary, Gary V has invested in it. Um, some big joint venture capsital. There is 50, 50 million Series A like two months ago, I think. So. No, I think it's just something that's, that's if people have an interest in football or have an investment in ve- interest in, in investments uh, and, uh, or fantasy football, it's it's worth checking out. You know, I think it's a, an ecosystem that's only going to grow. Yeah, I mean, this is probably like a very broad question, but how do you how do you go about investing in a in a card? Like, how do you decide that a card is yeah worth an investment? It's going to grow in price. Yeah, so fortunately, there's a, um, uh, and, it, and it's completely free, but there's a second website. It's not owned by Sorare. It's someone who's a, who is a user of the base, but it's called Sorare Data, and there's a huge amount of data. So they, so all, all of the scoring, I should also say this, all the scoring is based on up to stats. So it's all, you know, verifiable. It's all out there. So they, you can literally pick, you know, uh, Marcus Rashford, stick that into uh, Sorare Data, and it'll show you his average scores going back as far as the, the platform goes back. So you can start, and then from that, you can kind of see what scores do you need to, you know, you, you, you need to average sort of 50, a 50 score out of 100 for each of your five players to probably qualify for the smallest cash prize. So you start to build your, your squad and your team based on what you think those, um, their, their average scores are, do you think they perform well, those sorts of things. And um, you can also see the price of these cards, you know, how, how they how they've, priced over time whether the market's going up going down you know if player gets injured for three months like i think uh, virgil van dyke's a good example i'm not on this in particular but he was probably selling for like two and a half k 
some of the people have been able to pick him up in January for around 1200 So you'd think by November next year when he's back in full swing, you know, that's if you're willing to sit on your money, that's probably good. You probably doubled it in that, in that time, you know. You know I picked up uh, a midfielder yesterday for 350 that we're selling two weeks ago for 650 So I'm just going to sit on that. Hopefully that, that price goes up. You know, I'm still relatively new on the platform, a couple of months in, but I've done the trades, the cards that I've decided to sell, I've probably made a clear 2K profit so far. So, you know, it's, it, again, it's like with anything, it's a bit of a learning curve with it. But, um, you know, a lot of the cards can be, you can build a team quite cheaply, you know, a few hundred pounds and, you, and you've got a team that's good enough to at least enter some of these competitions and potentially pick up some prizes. So. Yeah, no, it sounds very, very interesting, mate. And I know I've gone a little bit off topic from the betting side of things, but I think, you know, investing, all this kind of stuff, it's all kind of interrelated somehow and and certainly an exciting and I think interesting topic for for our listeners. So yeah, mate, thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming on. I've I've really enjoyed talking to you about Sarah and then also all the betting stuff too. Predictology sounds like a, a really great tool for, for sports bettors out there. And um, yeah, hopefully we've got a few people going to going to check out your website and, and joining the team, mate. Maybe you just want to explain to everyone um, where, where they can find you maybe, where they can find Predictology, Football Advisor, all this kind of stuff and, and get involved. Yeah, so we're not uh, as active as we should be on, on, on social media. I think we can, if you, if you go to Facebook, it's probably our most active page for, for either of them, just type in Football Advisor or Predictology. Um, but, you know, pre- pre- certainly from Predictology's point of view, it's literally, there's, there's not many things out there with that name, but Predictology.co rather than .com, so just dot t- dot t- so take it straight there. Um, so Football Advisor, just footballadvisor.net. But you know, hit me up in the comments below if you can't find me, and um, I'll, I'll happily get in touch. Awesome. Thanks very much for your time, John. Uh, And yeah, Yeah. thanks for listening, everyone. Please make sure you do a quick rate and review of the podcast and subscribe to us on YouTube or Apple, Spotify, wherever you're listening. Um, And yeah, if you're looking to implement some of the strategies we talked about today or I guess weekly on the podcast, the value betting ones, start a free week trial of TradeMate Sports. Thanks again, John, and we'll uh, have to catch up soon. Yeah, I love that. Thanks, Alex. Great to be on. Uh, Have a good day.